Now for the final video of this chapter, we're going to be talking about how you see colors. So here is an example of how you would see the various colors of the rainbow by someone who is a trichromate. That means that they have all three, they can perceive all three co colors. They have raw, they have cones that process red, green, blue wavelengths. There are people that don't have all three pigmented cones. They could lack one. So here's this image as viewed by an observer lacking red cones, which is known as protonopia, and so they can't see the red. Interestingly, here's an observer lacking green cones, which is deuteronopia, and they can't see any green. But it's interesting then how aspects of these look pretty similar. So despite the fact that they are complete differences in terms of a red cone versus a green cone, remember that uh, the green cone is a little bit closer to the red cone on the spectrum. So if you go back to one of those earlier slides and you look at where they are in terms of wavelength, blue is really at one end of the wavelength and red is at the very opposite end of the wavelength. And here is an image as viewed by an observer that lacks the blue cones, so the tritinopia. So interestingly, it looks like they can still perceive blue, but it would be done in a different way. And this is important because this, these distinctions here illustrate how, how we actually perceive colors does not correspond directly to the activation of particular cones in terms of pigment. And so again, color is is has a perceptual component to it. So you learn that something is a particular color. There are people that are colorblind. So color blindness is a genetic disorder in which people are typically blind to green or red colors. And so there are multiple theories with regards to how we actually perceive color. And so one is this trichromatic theory that you need all three cone pigments to perceive to perceive color. And the fact that you cannot, if someone is colorblind, they cannot distinguish these two, these different colored dots. And I actually had, I was giving teaching this course a while back and I was presenting this visual information and I actually had a student that said, wait, I can't see the differences between those. And so she figured out that she was that she was uh, colorblind in the class, which is, which is surprising. But it does happen that because we learn what colors are, we may not actually realize that we do have some color blindness. So this makes a 74, and, it's, um, and if, you are, um, if you do have uh, color blindness, you might also happen to only see a 71. And then this is a 45 right here. So people that uh, are low in a particular cone or missing a particular pigmented cone, they won't be able to see these, these numbers through distinctions in color. So here's the trichromatic theory. The trichromatic theory is an explanation of color vision based upon the coding of three primary colors, red, green, and blue. So we have cones that are sensitive to three different wavelengths. So this really supports the trichromatic theory. There are some challenges, though, that it's not just related to the perception of these pigmented cones. So based on trichromatic theory, the color we see is determined by the relative responses of the different cone types. And so that gets back to what I talked about earlier, is that each of these cones, they have um, a peak responsiveness to a particular wavelength, but then they also perceive things that are a little bit shorter and a little bit longer than that wavelength. So the relative responsiveness of the different cones could give rise to nuances in color. So this can explain different types of color blindness, which supports the trichromatic theory. But the limitation is that there are four primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and green. So we have four primary colors, and you need all four of these primary colors to make all the colors that we perceive. So if we don't have a yellow cone, then how does trichromatic theory account for this? So it has trouble with the four basic colors. Uh, the, another limitation of the trichromatic theory is that it cannot explain after images. So I'll give you an example of an after image in a little bit, but if you stare at a color um, or a bright color long enough, then when you remove it from the screen, 
uh, what was there, what was red can um, activate sort of a blue after color and what was, I mean, excuse me, what was red would activate a green after color and what was blue would activate a yellow after color. And so the trichromatic theory cannot explain this after effect. Uh, finally, we have opponent process theory. And this was proposed by Herring, and this is an explanation of color vision that emphasizes the importance of the opposition of colors. So this would be red versus green and blue versus yellow. So this proposes that we don't respond to particular wavelengths, but we are responsive to different perceived colors. And so this may be really important for color constancy. So perceived color is constant relative to other colors regardless of changes in illumination. And so this is one thing that the trichromatic theory can't account for. The fact that uh, once we basically have a color permanence surrounding objects, so that if I have a particular jacket that I know is a color, I will perceive it as that color regardless of whether I am partially in illuminated or I'm in shadows or I'm in the dark or something like that. And here will be an example of demonstrating some color opposing pairs. So if you stare at the dot in the center, then um, just let it rest everything, let all the colors rest on your retina for a minute and just stare at it. And then once I take it off of the screen, then you'll see a differences in color. So after I take it off of the screen, and again, I'll bring it up here, stare at it for a little while, but after I removed it, you might have actually seen it last time, a very, very brief um, after image that basically corresponded to the actual colors of the flag. So that where there was uh, yellow, you would see red, and where there was, yeah, no, excuse me, where there was yellow, you would see blue, and where there was green, you would see red. And you can still see it right here. So that... Um, uh, sort of contrast effect is something that the trichromatic theory cannot explain. So this is the end of chapter 9. Please make sure that you read the that you are also reading this chapter in the textbook because there's a lot of there is definitely a fair amount of material that is in the chapter that I cannot cover in the entirety in this lecture. So um, stay tuned until next chapter.